It's getting your character aligned with the character of the Prophet ﷺ. That's at the center of this teaching. It's trying to align your character with the character of the Prophet ﷺ so that you actually follow his sunnah. I mean, one of the things that a lot of people do, they follow the sunnah of the beard, the siwak, the robe. They take all these outward sunnah, but then they don't follow the sunnah of smiling. Like they'll never smile. Now, the beard is an important sunnah, there's no doubt about that. But anybody can grow a beard. Do you know, it's, it's, it's an effortless practice. You just don't shave. Seriously, it's effortless. But smiling, when you don't feel like smiling, you know, that it takes effort to do that. And that's why it's one of his amazing sunnahs is that he was constantly smiling. Al-Dahak, that's one of his names, the one who smiled. And he always smiled when he saw people, you know, he, he, he greeted them with a smile. And they're amazing principles. And one of the examples that I've used many times, and Shaykh Abdullah al-Qadi, you can ask him about this because he was there and witnessed this. The Prophet ﷺ said, that none of you will enter paradise until you believe and none of you will believe until you love one another. And then he said, can I tell you something that if you do it, love will begin to grow amongst you. And they said, yes, indeed, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, spread peace amongst you. Now, the primary meaning of that is actually give the greeting of peace, of shu salam bainakum. But it also, it obviously has just what it means, spread peace amongst you. But you know, we were, we, we were in Medina and we used to go every morning the same door and there was a man there, very grumpy man, you know, one of these guards at the door. And the first day I said, Salaamu Alaikum to him. And he just, he looked at me, he's like, Wa Alaikum Salaam. You know, just... And then the next morning we came, same man. And I was with Sheikh Abdullah and I smiled, said, Salaamu Alaikum. And he was like, Wa alaikum salam, you know. And then the next day I came, same man. This is a true story. And I said, Salam alaikum. And he looked at me and just a s tiny smile broke. And then the next day I came and I just, Salam alaikum, you know. Sabah al khair. And I swear to God, Sheikh Abdullah al Qadi was there. He came up and he hugged me. You know, just, it, it takes work. People don't, they don't, we don't want to do that work to break down these, you know, human icicles. And people have reasons why they are the way they are. And a lot of it is just they didn't get enough hugs when they were kids or whatever. I don't know. There's a lot of reasons for it. Why people are in the state. The lack of trust that they have for other people. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. But that, that aspect of our deen is so ignored. You know, this aspect of just adab and treating people with respect, you know, with human dignity, it's so ignored. And then the Muslim Ummah wonders why nobody treats us with respect. We don't treat each other with respect. Why should anybody respect us? Why should God grant us that gift of being respected if we don't respect each other? You know, if we don't have just basic ethar, you know, tafadda. And I'll just give you one more example of this. Uh, when I was in Medina, I was with a man driving and um, somebody cut him off and he started honking his horn. And, and, uh, and I just said to him, you know, uh, I said that 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 is it's such a horrible thing to hear in this city all the honking that goes on Mecca's the worst for that for honking I mean, it's just people and the amazing thing is they honk when it's meaningless like honking you know there's a reason to honk 
honking. I mean, there's a reason why you have a horn in your car. Because it's like to, to stop something really dangerous from happening. Or, you know, if somebody really does something, you know, you honk and let them know it, that wasn't appropriate. I want a bumper sticker, don't shoot, I admit I'm a lousy driver, you know. Um, but people, you know, people do things, they cut you off sometime by mistake. And people, whenever they get cut off, they never remember the times they've cut off people by accident. There's always the assumption, what an idiot. So, uh, this man, I just told him, I said, you know, the, the maqam of driving is ithar. They prefer others to themselves. That's the maqam of driving. Because when people have that type of adab on the road, driving is much more safe. And it's actually a much more, uh, it's, it's already a difficult thing to drive. It's not, you know, it's an intense thing to do. You're traveling at high speeds and uh, it's very dangerous. And it's already a difficult thing. But when people have courtesy on the road, it just makes it easier to handle all those difficulties. So I just told him that. He said, no, you don't understand here. Everybody, it's nafsi nafsi. And I said, well, don't be one of those people. You know, you need to change. I came back a year later. And uh, the same person, he's actually the son of a sheikh in Medina, a really sweet man. And a year later, and he told me, and I'd completely forgotten about this, you know, just that incident. But he told me, you know, I had an amazing experience this year um, based on something you said last year. And I said, what? And he said, do you remember when the, I told, got angry with that person cut me off and you said, you know, you should really prefer people driving? He said, well, I decided to do that, to practice that. And he said, I was amazed at what I saw. Like people, just how they responded to that. You know, so he uh, he experienced that just of doing. Sayyid Naqib al Atta said that the the crisis of this ummah is adab. That that's what he said, and and I really believe that he said that adab is a loss of prioritization because when you put yourself first, everything else is chaos when you put yourself first, when you are your major concern, everything else is chaos. Now, that is not to negate alaykum anfuskum, take care of your souls. But taking care of the souls in reality is taking care of other souls. I mean, that, that's, that's the reality of it, is that when you begin to get out of that egocentricity and move into a world that actually is taking other people into consideration, that, that that is nurturing your own soul. That's how you work on yourself. And that's, you know, that is Islam. That's why I'm a Muslim. It's not for all this madness out there. It's because of people like that. Because that's the embodiment of the Prophet's Sunnah. If you want to follow the Sunnah, it's not big beards and short robes. It's that magnanimity of character. You know, the ability to, to not want vengeance not have that resentment because he saw God somebody asked him in the Mawaqif why are the Christians taking over he said because we abandon our religion and God is putting these people over us because we've humiliated his religion and now we humiliate ourselves that's what he said and he said that God manifests as the Nasir in Tansurullah Yansurkum if you Give victory to God, God will give victory to you. And he said, but if you are khadil, if you forsake this religion, يَتَجَلَّ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَىٰ عَلَيْكَ بِصِيفَةَ الْخَادِلِ That God will manifest himself to you as khadil, the one that forsakes you. Uh, and also, and muhafadha ala ittiba' al-sunnati, you'll want to behave like the Prophet. And the thing about Sidi Ismail, he, he doesn't have the outward sunnas, that a lot of people focus on, but he has the character of the Prophet. He's following the Sunnah that nobody follows anymore. You know, everybody's got the Sunnah of the beard, the siwak, the short robe, but the akhlaq of the Prophet, the love the Prophet had for people, their care, 
that's the real ittiba. It's not to belittle those other things. But if you're focusing on those other things and neglecting the reality, his inward reality, his forbearance, his care, his concern, his mercy, all those things, then you're missing the point. And then also loving the, your fellow Muslims, having really love for them, not the Prophet ﷺ said, do you want to see a man who, who's in paradise? And this, they saw this man, and one of the Sahaba said, I wanted to find out what he had that other people didn't have. And he went and he asked if he could stay with him for a few days and he said yes and he didn't fast, he didn't pray extra, he was pretty normal, just regular like anybody else in Medina and he couldn't understand it and he, he was convinced, you know, why is this man different? And, and he told him, I, I want to see what, is there anything that you do, what's your practice? He said, I make sure that I never go to sleep with, with having a bad feeling towards any Muslim. And the Prophet said, that's what he was hinting at. It was that man's pure heartedness. He didn't have rancor or resentment. And, and, and that type of purity. You know, the Prophet said, You know, are, is one of you unable to be like Abu Dhambam? Abu Dhambam was somebody who used to give his honor, his name, in charity to people that spoke ill of him. Like if he heard somebody spoke, he'd say, أَتَّصَدَّقْ You know, he, it's charity. In other words, those good deeds that he, the man lost for speaking ill of him, he gave back to him as charity. So he said, Does some of you, uh, can, you can't be like Abu Dhambam, give that back to the people in charity. But other people, they hear somebody spoke ill of them, and uh, you know, they want to go kill them. Uh, and, and may Allah give us the maqam of mahabba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in mahabba. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of mahabba. The Prophet said, uh, he said, Wallahi, la tadkhul al-jannata hatta tu'minu, wa la tu'minu hatta tahabu. You will not enter paradise until you believe, and you do not, will not believe until you love one another. And that love of one another is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to love one another also. That's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, Can I tell you something that if you do it, you will love one another? Spread peace amongst you. Be peacemakers. Don't be people of fitna. Don't be people of sedition. Don't be people of namima and ghiba and all these things. Spread peace among one another. That's what you should be doing. Be peacemakers. Because peace is, is from love. Tahiyyatun fiha salam. Their greeting in paradise is peace. Paradise is a place of love. The Prophet also said, Ala la iman liman la mahabbata lahu. Ala la iman liman la mahabbata lahu. Ala la iman liman la mahabbata lahu. Verily, there is no faith for the one that has no love. Verily, there is no faith for the one that has no love. Verily, there is no faith for the one that has no love. Alhamdulillah. Zakum Allah khairan.